Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our time of prayer and devotion. Uh, we're getting set up and getting logged in, so uh, just going to take a few minutes to get squared away here as people are logging in. We thank you guys um, so much for being a part of our prayer and devotion time this evening. Uh, we're going to go into the Word here just momentarily. Uh, I'm just logging in, and as I log in, I just want to say hello to everyone that is watching. Uh, we are live in our prayer and consecration time in the Word of God, and so um, we're going to be praying. We're going to be seeking God tonight. Um, as you can see, we're going to be praying uh, on top of the entertainment mountain tonight. So I pray that you guys are ready as we have uh, much to uh, obtain at this mountain. So it's going to be a good time. So I just want to take a minute as those are logging in. Um, also, at the end of our time together tonight, uh, immediately following, uh, we're going to have our prayer altar, our prayer line available. Um, if you need prayer, if you want to call in and be a part of prayer, we have a host that is going to be waiting for you. When I finish up here at about 7 p.m. or so, um, someone's going to be there. The number is 701-802-5269. The access code is 3710737. So that'll be at the bottom of the screen once we get going in our prayer time and devotion time. But again, I know there's a lot to be praying for. There's a lot of needs. Um, and so we want to come into agreement with you. Just go ahead and call that number when I finish up tonight and be a part of powerful prayer time. God is doing much through prayer. And so we welcome everyone here tonight. We thank you for um, just being a part of this time together as we share. It's been a beautiful day here. Sunshine, nice weather. We've had a, a ton of rain the last couple of days. And so we can expect things to turn green and grow. And I'm speaking now concerning spiritual. Our lives, we're going to grow. We're going to develop things that maybe look dead or look like it was brown is going to turn green and yield a great harvest. So let's get ready for harvest time here at Faith Walk across the body of Christ, across the world. Um, thank you guys so much. We're going to go into prayer here in the moment. I uh, just want to go into some scripture time with you. Uh, go with me to Isaiah 52, verse 7. We've always begun over the last couple of weeks with this scripture here because to me it identifies uh, where our feet need to be as Isaiah says it and then Paul also says it in Romans chapter 10 but here it says how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publish peace that bringeth good tidings of good that publish salvation that saith unto Zion thy God reigneth and so we believe that to be true we've been confessing that during our prayer times the last couple weeks our God reigns on every mountain. We want to come into agreement, stay in agreement with that, continue to speak that over our lives. Our God reigns on every mountain, and he's placing us in these mountains um, to have dom uh, dominion and authority there. So we want to agree tonight that on every mountain, we're releasing what the scripture says, and I'm looking at it right now. We want to bring good tidings, our feet being there, meaning we're planted there. We're bringing good tidings. We're bringing peace. We're bringing a good word, we're bringing hope, we're bringing salvation, we're bringing ultimately the kingdom of God. God is going to reign on those mountains. And so we believe that to be true. And, and if you joined us Tuesday, I added one to our prayer list called healthcare, uh, which is a hot topic, very, very much a huge industry being affected drastically going through this time, but it's always been a huge market. And so continue to lift up our healthcare workers, those in that field, those even related to that field. We talk about, you know, the pharmacy workers, we talk about, you know, the nursing homes and those that work there. And so let's continue to keep that industry and those attached to that industry lifted up. But tonight we're going to deal with uh, the entertainment mountain. I have scripture I'm going to read to you just concerning prayer. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this entertainment mountain um, how huge it is, how big it is, how much it impacts our life every single day. And so we need to arm the people of God on the entertainment mountain to do the things of God. And so I pray that you would join along with me today. Uh, this is prayer time. This is devotion time. This is time for me to take seed and sow into your life and, and yield and, and water it and cause it to yield a great harvest. And so I'm trusting that our time together in prayer, we're standing in agreement not just here, but even once we finish, I want your prayer lives to uh, reflect what we talk about here so that we could stand in agreement and continue to be in agreement. That's important, guys. There's power in agreement. If there's one thing you know about me, if you haven't known, you should know it now, but you already probably know I'm a man of unity. I like oneness. I like agreement. I like things to be in harmony. And so when we're in harmony, when we're in sync, when we're in frequency, things happen. 
the right things happen. Things that God wants can happen. And he works in unity. Beloved, I wish above all you prosper, be in help, even as your soul prosper. All that works through unity. And he wants us to be in unity once toward another. And so here I want to go to um, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. And uh, we're going to go into um, just a prayer time and momentarily. But in Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, Jesus teaches us a parable. And I love it so much. He says this in verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint. Always to pray. We believe that prayer is important in every facet of society, on every mountain, in every home, in every gathering. We believe prayer is paramount. We believe that prayer is important. We got to release prayer. Okay. So he spake this parable unto them. He said, men ought always to pray. Always, always. Now, understanding we can't verbally pray in every place that we're in, but our heart and our spirit, we can still pray. And so maybe you might can't open up and pray in the midst of school or in the midst of your job where you're working, but prayer is in your heart. And so God is saying through this in Jesus' words, we need to have a heart or a mindset of prayer all the time. And that's key because when we take our eyes off of prayer, we open up doors for the enemy to come in. Here's what Jesus says, saying, there was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. What a great parable Jesus is talking about prayer. He's talking about this woman within a city who continually came to a judge to avenge her of an adversary. And she didn't come just once. She kept coming repeatedly over and over again begging that judge, going to that judge, hey, I need you to avenge me. I need you to stand for me. I need you to deal with this. I need you. And the Bible says, according to Jesus, that this unjust judge, he didn't fear man, he didn't fear God, but he said, because this lady, this woman keeps coming back over and over again, I'm going to do for her what she asks of me, lest she weary me by her continual coming. That means that that woman had persistence. What I learned from this tonight is I learned that in prayer, we must be persistent. We must come in faith, but we must be persistent to access what God has for us. When you know that it's in the word, when you know it's concerning your life, I want you to go after it as though you have it. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto us. And so we believe tonight that this woman Jesus is teaching was about prayer. Because remember, he started the first verse. He said, men are always to pray and not faint. So this parable is teaching about how we should pray and not give up. Although you don't see results today, this woman came back the next day. If you don't see results next week, you come back the next week. Don't you lose heart in prayer. Don't you lose heart in seeking God and going before God. We might not have seen the change we wanted to see in this COVID-19 over the last couple of months, but I know that change has already taken place. I know it's not by what my natural eyes see, it's by what my spirit man has already received. And so this woman was coming back every single day. Jesus is teaching us that we need to pray fervently, effectually. We need to pray and not lose heart every single day. If you don't see the manifestation today, don't think that God didn't hear you and don't think that God didn't answer you. You're going by natural eyes. We need to walk by faith. So if you don't have it in your pocket, if your body don't feel like it should, it doesn't mean that God didn't answer and didn't do it. When you have faith, Faith reaches up into the atmosphere, into the heavenlies, and it pulls down the answer and makes it a reality even though you don't have it naturally. Faith doesn't need natural results. Faith doesn't need a man to report it. Faith doesn't need the news to, to uh, come into agreement with it. Faith says, I got it the moment that I asked God for it. And I'm coming back daily, thanking God, believing God, knowing that God is answering. And so that is our teaching about going after this thing continually. Now, here's what Jesus says in his parable I love the most. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night? 
Think about it. The unjust judge knew enough to answer this woman's plea. And God is saying through Jesus here, don't you know that the Lord is going to do that much greater? If an unjust judge knows how to answer a woman, a widow, how much more does the God of all heaven and earth know how to answer you right now? That unjust judge, Jesus said, did not fear God, didn't fear man, and didn't regard man or nothing all. But he knew enough that he had to answer this woman's plea because she wasn't going to stop. And I, this is so encouraging because Jesus says, I will tell you, I'll avenge them speedily. <laughs> I'll do it quickly. I'm releasing the answer right now. I'm opening up the doors right now. And I believe that we got to come into agreement with that word and be like that widow and continue to pray fervently continue to come before the throne of grace with boldness come before God with confidence come before God with a sense of belonging you are a child of God you are son daughter of God you belong in the beloved you belong in the body of Christ you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and so you have a place in the body and so when we come to God God is saying through Jesus here will he will he not avenge you he'll do it quickly if an unjust judge knows how to do right and answer someone how much more does God know how to answer you believe me tonight we're going to pray and God is going to answer some prayers and specifically he's going to deal with the mountain of entertainment why is this mountain of entertainment so important well it's important because this mountain is an area of life where we spend a lot of money and a lot of time. Now, granted, I believe that the majority of our time probably is spent on our jobs. You might be at your job eight to maybe 10 hours a day, and some drive an hour back and forth. And so you're looking at sometimes 10 to 12 hours a day. Half your day could be spent at your job. And then the other part, you know, you're getting dressed, you're eating, uh, you know, you have other things you do, you watch a little TV and this and that. But I believe that outside of like working, uh, an area that we spend the majority of our time is in, in some form of entertainment. And ladies and gentlemen, when I look at today's society, entertainment has been shut off. Entertainment, meaning the entertainment that we're used to enjoying outside. So we've had to find ways to entertain ourselves in the confines of our own home. So I looked at the word entertainment and I just began to just like think about and study, okay, what are the different forms of entertainment that we have in our world today? What do we have access to? What do we do with our time? If we're not working, if we're not at church, you know, if we're not in other places, what is our time being spent on? And God began to show me it's in some form of entertainment the majority of our time. We're entertaining ourselves, we're entertaining our family, we're entertaining our children, we're entertaining guests. And, and I, so I looked up some different areas of entertainment, and what I begin to see in entertainment is, think about these forms, okay? I came up with, there are many different variations, you can come up with more, but here's a list of the different types of entertainment that we've been accustomed to. Now, I'm going to give you the list of entertainment that we have as a world experience, but I'm going to show you, and you can do this for yourself, that in each area, if not all of these areas I mentioned, entertainment from the world's perspective, we can entertain ourselves in the same way in a godly sense. And so it's critical that we pray for our entertainment. All right, here we go. The first one was banquets. We love weddings. We love birthdays. There's entertainment in that. We enjoy that time. It brings out laughter. It brings out love. And so we look forward to those beautiful June, July, August, summer day weddings, you know, that are bright and sunny. Or, you know, you look forward to the birthdays. You look forward to the gatherings together. It brings people together in joy and harmony. Another form of entertainment. Now, again, we celebrate weddings. God institute marriage. And so when we do a marriage, we do it as unto God. And so it glorifies God. Secondly, music. Who here does not enjoy some form of music in some way? Music. Just enjoying um, listening to your, your, your favorite artists. You know, your, think about we have so many artists in the world, but think about all the Christian artists right now that are struggling in terms of being able to go out and, and have concerts or sing and do places or do recordings, bring people together. They're limited now. And so our prayers go out to our artists with music because I don't know about you, but I love good worship. I love good praise music. It's, it's a lifter of the spirit, the soul man. And so we need to pray in our music industry because it's taking a hit on the Christian side, but God is going to resurrect it stronger than we had it before. Think about other areas of entertainment. We play games. I mean, who here wouldn't like a good game of Monopoly? 
Battleship, Connect Four, Gestures. I mean, think about how we sometimes hang out and we grab the Uno cards, we play games, entertainment. We're entertaining ourselves. Um, reading is another form of entertainment. Some people look at it as as a, a, a grudgery. Oh gosh, why I gotta read? Well, many people read for entertainment. I like to read. I enjoy reading. It's entertaining. It's edifying. It's information. It's education. Um, comedy. Who don't like to laugh? I mean, think about the Christian comedy, which was a very growing and is a gr very growing industry right now. You know, we had our comedians in our world. In the world, we have those. But think about Christian comedians. I mean, we enjoy the laughter. That's good. How about other performances like concerts, dances? Think about the concerts that are held, the hosted, all across the world. And now there are no concerts being held, you know, because why? We don't want the gatherings because these are those concerts that are going to draw thousands of people. Especially if that artist is well known worldwide, worldwide. Guess what happens? All the people gather. We need to pray, guys, because there are many great Christian artists that are anointed. And they draw people together under the kingdom of God. And they're pouring seed. They're pouring the word of God in. We need that in our generation again. We need that in our time again. How about uh, like theater? People go to the theater, a nice show, you know, have on your suit and tie and, you know, you have on your formal wear and you go to a nice show, you know, Lord of the Dance and you're enjoying that. But after a nice dinner at the Rosemont area, I mean, these are, this is entertainment. I've enjoyed shows like that. Entertaining, very, you know, encouraging, just, you know, just very socially astute. We like those type of things, right? Then we have the cinema. I mean, how, who don't like to go to the show? Look at you, you guys probably got your popcorn in your hand right now. Wish you could go to the, the cinema, Cinema 12 or, you know, the other one, AMC 30. But guess what, guys? That industry is frozen for the time being. But think about beyond that. And I just want to take a few moments to look at that uh, theater area of entertainment. How many actors and actresses right now are unemployed? Think about the world. But I look at the Christian side. I thank God. Because as I see now, growing older in life, more Christian movies. And it's been a blessing to enjoy, you know, Christian movies rising up. I mean, it's been a joy and pleasure to watch, you know, Courageous. It's been a joy and pleasure to watch all these movies that are coming up on the Christian side that are being produced, that are making millions of dollars, that are not just low-budget films, but are, are making a mark into society. We need to arm and support our Christian actors and those that are producing those films that are changing lives. I mean, think about it. We need those type of things more and more back in our world today. Um, looking at others, how about entertainment? Who don't like to go to the circus? Who don't like to see the elephants and who don't like to see all that balancing going on and shooting out of cannons and enjoying. I mean, you take your kids there. It's entertainment. The circus is in town. Let's go. Yeah, we're going to enjoy. We know what to expect. How about parades, festivals? You know, and usually these parades, festivals, they end with fireworks. Think about like the 4th of July, how thousands of people come together and there's this fireworks show after we've, you know, hung out and had food and barbecue. Guys, we're not having that this year. Our entertainment industry has been stifled. What are we doing with our time? That's the key right there. It's time that's open. How do we fill that void? We don't fill it with ungodly. We fill it with godly things. And so we have to use wisdom. How about amusement parks and zoos? Think about it, guys. People that enjoyed going to the great Americas, people that enjoy going to Disney and, and enjoying all the wonderful world of, of the arts in terms of entertainment and festivals and amusement parks. Guess what, guys? That's frozen now. How do we fill that void for vacation? What do we do with vacation now? Well, I'll tell you one thing you can do. You can save some money. Right. But beyond that, we got to learn how to entertain ourselves in our homes and our families in Christian values. Now, God has given us this time not to be bored, not to just do nothing. But I believe we have found out ways to entertain ourselves, even enjoying a game of Uno at home with, you know, uh, the, the parents and the children or, you know, even enjoying some Christian films and going back and watching old show. It's enjoyable. Guys, we got to pray for this industry that it comes back strong because we have used it a lot and we continue to use it a lot. But then here are the last two, which might be the most, you know, popular out of all of these sports, sports. I mean, think about all the stadiums across the world. Just look at the United States alone that are filled with a football stadium, for instance, can be filled with, you know, 50 to 100,000 people, depending on the size. 
a basketball stadium like United Center can be filled up towards, you know, 20 to 25,000 people. A baseball field like Wrigley Field can have up toward 40,000 fans in one game. There is no sports right now that we can enjoy. We're watching reruns. We already know the outcome. So how do we fill that time of entertainment when we can't watch Sports Center and see what happened with our favorite team in another city or another state? Guys, this is time to spend with God. All right, and then the 13th one is, is, and some of you are going to jump and shout out this. Some is upset about this. Shopping. Malls closed. Who would ever thought that Woodfield Mall would be closed? Or who would ever thought the largest North American mall um, uh, in, in Minnesota would be closed? Who would ever thought that? Who would ever thought that these would be closed and you couldn't shop? Entertainment. Many people just go to the mall for entertainment to walk, to window shop. Mall of America has an amusement park inside of it. They go for the entertainment of it. So there is a lot that's affected by this mountain. So my question is tonight, would you join with me in prayer for this critical mountain that affects all of us in great ways? Because all of us entertain ourselves in one of these ways that I mentioned to you. But what I've learned is in each one of these ways, we can also use it for the kingdom of God. We can pray that God gives us how to enjoy the entertainment mountain serving him. Isn't that good? And so there are many people affected by this mountain. As we go by, we look at all the athletes. We look at you know all of the malls, the, sh the stores that are struggling. We look at all the actors, the actresses. We look at all the singers, those artists that are performing, that are, are had concerts scheduled throughout the summer, might not be having these concerts at all now. And so there is a great, great surplus of people that are struggling, that are going to be affected by this mountain. Now, what do we have to look forward to? Well, we should always be looking forward to our time in Christ. Let's now learn how to entertain ourselves in Christ, okay? And it doesn't mean that you got a Bible in your hand, entertain. I love to read the Word of God, but I also love to do other things that are that I enjoy life as being a Christian, and that's entertainment. And so we're not so heavenly bound and that we're no earthly good. We're not so into that Bible where we can't stop and go out and enjoy a good show and enjoy a good game, a basketball game, or enjoy a good festival. I mean, it's part of life that we enjoy together. And that part of life for the last couple months has been kind of taken from us, you know, and we understand why, because of the gatherings. Well, we want that mountain to come back strong. We want that mountain to come back in a way that we can reflect Christ at that mountain. I want to see even greater Christian films come out of this. I want to see even greater music come out of this by these Christian artists. You know, I want to see greater things begin to happen in the area of these arts that we can enjoy. And I say this here because I believe that even beyond that, you know, when we come back together as families, as, as you know, reunions and weddings, birthdays, all those things, we're going to appreciate more, better each other. We'll appreciate each other's life. We'll appreciate each other's, you know, ability to do what you do. It's like, man, the grudges, the things you had against people, we need to throw it away. You know why? Because we understand that we need each other in this hour. And, and we got to make sure that we stay together. So I, I just want to go back to our scripture and I want to remind you what Jesus said. He said in that parable, he spake unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not faint. There's always something to pray about. And tonight, our prayers are going to be pointed toward this entertainment mountain okay now let me say this in this mountain this mountain has been used a lot for the glory of satanic forces but we see the glory of god has risen up over the last 15 20 years greater than i've ever seen it in my life and so the enemy tried to help control that mountain we see god's people rising up and I like to say this here, when you see these actors, when you see these artists, when you see a lot of these people that are doing their things, uh, the majority of them probably got their start in the church. Isn't that something? And so what we need to do is, is we need to pray about strategic ways that these talented young men, young women that are growing up in our church grow up to appreciate the church. So that when they establish themselves, they don't take the gift that God has given them and sow it into the world and let the world use them and then throw them away. You'd be amazed and you read the stories about many artists who have lost their life. They got so caught up in the world and the world loved them in a moment and then the world hated them the next. And they didn't know how to do both. They didn't know how to live that life. But when you're in Christ, there is balance, my friends. 
We're able to balance out life. And when the road gets tough, we've got an anchor, and his name is Jesus. We're not going to sink, guys. We're going to stay afloat. We're going to walk in this water. We're going to get to the other end. But there are many artists that have struggled in life. They have turned to drugs. They've turned to alcohol. They've turned to just bad lifestyle, abusive relationships. And we don't want that in our entertainment world. We want the pureness. We want the righteousness of God to be in our entertainment field. And so I really want to pray about that tonight, that God rebuilds the entertainment mountain that we see Christians rising up on this mountain, that we appreciate, and that is we as Christians sow into these mountains. You know, spend that money with that Christian, you know, film or that Christian artist or that Christian company. Spend that money with them. It's good money spent. We're, we're arming them because they're planting a seed into the kingdom of God. And ladies and gentlemen, as I said at the beginning, the entertainment mountain, how much money were you spending every week to entertain yourself and your family? What were you doing? Were you going to the show every week? Were you going to a ball game? Were you going to Great America? You know, were, were you going to a festival? Were you going to a parade? Were you going, where, where, where area, how much money and time were you spending at this mountain? Now, how much time do you have now that we could spend with God? And when things open back up, let's now take that time and pour it into things that not only just, just build the world economy, but edifies the family, okay? Everything we do should edify God, glorify God, build our family, build our relationships. And so I, I hope that you understand tonight how critically important these mountains are, in particular tonight, entertainment. Because many of us, after I finish you watching me now, you're going to seek entertainment for tonight. <laughs> you're going to look to entertain your family. Many parents have kind of at their wits end, how do I keep my child entertained? Well, a big thing of entertainment, I didn't really mention it, but it's in here, is, you know, people have these iPads or they have the Androids and now children are entertained by YouTube or by these games. But we have to be careful that in this entertainment world, Satan is not snuck in these games that our children are playing. I mean, you know the history of the things that have gone on in our world where our young people have been accustomed to games and have been inside and they've been working uh, on your iPad, on your phone. What game are they playing? To what end is it? I mean, is it a violent game with guns and shooting and, and theft? I mean, we don't play those games. It's not, we don't want to endorse theft. We don't want to endorse murder. And so, you know, many kids spend hours a day with gun type games, shooting, 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 and learning how to do that and seeing gross things and think about what's happening in their mind and heart. We have to begin to shift and change how we entertain ourselves. So when this shutdown is lifted, we need to make sure that our entertainment is pure. Our entertainment is a blessing. Our entertainment is enjoyable with right morals and integrity. So I hope that makes sense tonight. I want to begin our time of prayer and I want you to pray along with me let's be seeking God on entertainment when this shutdown is lifted what are we going to do with our lives how important is our family now how important it is to just spending time enjoying things enjoying the sunshine going for a walk is entertaining you know going out to a musical entertaining uh, going out to the show entertaining how much more rewarding and gratifying is that going to feel Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Lord of glory, Lord of all heaven and earth, we thank you tonight because you've given us feet that are beautiful to be planted upon the mountain. And on tonight, God, our feet are planted upon the mountain of entertainment. God, we come together tonight in prayer and we're praying on this mountain, not at the bottom, but at the top. Our job is to bring good tidings. Our job is to bring peace. Our job is to publish salvation. God, I thank you that your name is glorified at the entertainment mountain. God, I know that there are and have been many, many things at this mountain that did not please you and does not please you. And yet, Lord God, I thank you and praise you because Christians are rising up on this mountain. And so, Lord, our prayers tonight are beginning with coming alongside of the artists, the actors, Lord God, those that serve at this mountain, Father, we speak a word of encouragement to them right now. I thank you because on this mountain, you are being glorified. Father, Lord God, we need this mountain. We, we uh, spend a lot of time. We spend a lot of money, income at this mountain. Lord, we want the entertainment to be pure. And so, God, I pray for the pureness at that mountain. 
The Lord, those actors, those artists, Lord God, those that are serving in these areas, the athletes, Lord God, the singers, Lord God, those that are, are serving in this mountain, Father, give them the courage to stand for you. Lord God, allow them not to put themselves in positions, Lord God, to, to go against your word. Lord, I pray a hedge of protection around every man and woman, Lord God, that is at this mountain, Lord God. Every man and woman, Lord, that is serving vigilantly, Lord God. Every man and woman, Lord God, that is faithful to your call. Lord, give them the stamina to stand. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, Lord God, for our own ears, for our own eyes, that what we hear, what we see, Lord God, what we take in is not contaminating our body, our soul, Lord God, but that is refreshing to our soul. It's building to our body, Lord God. It's causing us to become better, a better man of God, a better woman of God, a better husband, a better wife, a better son, a better daughter, a better employee, a better employer, Lord God. It's causing us to be a better father, a better mother. Lord, ways that we entertain ourselves, Lord God, Lord, that is, does not contaminate us, Lord God, to become worse, to present bad examples, Lord, to release uh, morals that don't line up with your word. Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would give us the ability to see and to know exactly what's of you and what's of not of you. Father, we agree tonight, Lord God, that we do have entertainment. Father, there was entertainment in your day. And Lord, there's entertainment in our day. And Lord, we want our entertainment, Lord God, to be that which pleases you, that which we can speak about openly, Lord God, and enjoy and invite others to enjoy. And so, Lord God, let your spirit begin to reign greater in this hour on the entertainment mountain. Lord, even touch the writers, uh, the producers, Lord God, the film crew, the photographers, all those that play an important part in this mountain of entertainment, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for the grace in this hour. Uh, continue, continue to stand for you, Lord God. Father, I'm praying against every demonic attack that comes at this mountain. Father, everything that's being inserted into those TVs that's causing our eyes, Lord God, to shift another direction, we rebuke that spirit right now. God, we don't accept the things in this world that don't line up with you. And where the world is trying to force it into our face, where the world is trying to force feed us, God, we deny that right now. God, every spirit of unrighteousness, every unclean spirit, every abominable spirit, everything, God, that is coming at us that is against, Lord, Scripture, Lord, we refute it right now. We rebuke it. We don't allow our eyes to see the things that are degrading to you. We don't allow our ears to hear the things that degrade you. Father, we take a stand right now in the name of Jesus, and we speak to that mountain, Lord God, and we cause that mountain right now in the name of Jesus to come under the authority of the Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Father, I pray now, God, that this mountain would be a mountain of purity, Lord, even as we prepare, Lord, to reopen, Lord God, and go back into society, Lord God. I pray that as we move forward, God, we move forward, Lord God, with you on our for at the forefront of our thoughts, Lord God, that as we, Lord, look for ways to entertain our family, our children, Lord God. We don't sink and lower ourselves, Lord, into the enticement of the world. Father, we stay true to what you've given us, Lord God. We stay true, Lord God, to your spirit and how you are moving and speaking to us. Lord, we will not succumb to the pressure of this world. They might try to feed us, but we don't have to eat it. And so, God, we say no right now in Jesus' name. God, we refuse, we refute, God, the things that don't line up with you right now. God, I pray that you would cover everyone that's praying with me tonight, that we would begin to take a stand in this entertainment mountain, and we would demand purity. We would demand holiness. We would demand the righteousness. We would demand integrity. We would demand the right morals. We would demand the right character, Lord God. We would demand things that are making our society better, Lord God. And Father, Lord God, we will stand against those things, Lord God, that are evil, those things that are unrighteous those things that are unclean. Lord, I pray tonight that Christians would rise up around the world and begin to release their talents, Lord, as believers in the entertainment market so that we can enjoy Christ together. We can enjoy the fellowship amongst the brethren together. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that from this day forward, our mindsets in entertaining, Lord God, ourselves would be as of you and not just what we want. What do you want for us, God? We pray that prayer tonight. Give us the boldness to stand in prayer. Even as Jesus taught us that men ought always to pray and not faint. 
Father, I thank you tonight that we will continue to pray for this mountain and not lose heart. Even when we see the enemy coming in like a flood, Lord God, we know that your word says the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against it. And Father, I thank you right now that Jesus, you are the standard. There can be no greater standard than you, Jesus. And so we depend and we trust and we stand at your feet as our standard. Father, I thank you that we will not faint. We will not lose heart. We will not give in. We will not become tired, we'll become, not become weary, but that we'll continue to stand strong. And Lord, you are a good God. You're a good father. Even as an unjust judge knows how to answer and respond, Lord God Almighty, we know that you will answer us greater than any natural man. You would do it speedily, Lord God. You would do it quickly, Lord God. You would do it, Lord God, because you love us. So God, we pray tonight that we will be encouraged in our times of prayer. As we pray for these mountains, we pray on top of the mountains tonight, God, that your will is being done, that your will is being not just established, but your will is being accomplished. Lord, I thank you right now that you will get the glory for everything that we say, everything that we do, every song that we sing. God, I pray right now that every movie that we watch, every store that we shop at, every performance that we see, Lord, it reflects you. It can glorify you. We can enjoy it, Lord God, in the purity of living this Christian life. God, I thank you in Jesus' name that those that serve again in that area would be encouraged, that you would meet their needs in this tough time. You would supply their needs. Lord, you would give them what they need. Lord, the heart to continue on. And God, we are come into agreement tonight that we call this mountain blessed and we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. This mountain is important. I take passion in this mountain because, you know, I don't spend every hour inside of the church. There are things that we enjoy like you enjoy. And I want us to enjoy these things. And I don't want the world to rob us of enjoying our Christian life. So we want to be able to enjoy these things and honor God at the same time. And that's our prayer, that we enjoy entertainment. God knew that. God gave us entertainment. He established it even in Bible times. There was entertainment. And I want to enjoy entertainment tonight tonight, and for the rest of my life. Maybe you want to go for a walk and entertain your family tonight. Go for a walk. Talk about the goodness of God. Look at the beautiful nature that God's created. That's entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. That's entertainment. Look at the beautiful flowers that are budding, that are blossoming now. The, the grass is green. We're enjoying it. This is God's creation. When you look at heaven and earth, you say, wow, look at the beauty between all this, between the ground, earth, and all the way up. We see the beauty and the authority and the power of God. Entertainment. Whether you sit down tonight and you pop in that DVD or that Blu-ray or you you know, download that movie to watch on Netflix or whatever it is, or Pure Flix. Make sure it's something that God can sit there right with you and talk with you about that movie. Make sure it's something that you can conversate about and say, you know what, this is good. I don't have to put my hands over my kids' eyes. I don't have to put my hands in their ears, tell them to, you know, go upstairs and come back in 10 minutes. You know, we need to raise ourselves with enjoyment. We're Christians. We're not hermits. We can go out and enjoy the world as Christians. I love a good laugh. I love some good comedy. But I tell you what, I don't want to plug my ears and go like this when people feel like to make me laugh, you've got to curse and degrade women or you've got to degrade the church. That's not funny. What's funny is, is when you can take a good scene and we can all laugh about it. Hey, you remember in church we'd be like, yeah, I can laugh too. That stuff is funny, but it's not degrading. Think about it, my friends. Entertainment's so important for us. How do we spend our time when this shutdown or stay-at-home order is lifted? We're entertaining ourselves now. Game night. Who is not having maybe game night? And you pull out the Monopoly. You know, a good game of Monopoly is going to take at least three, four hours. I mean, think about it. You can start a game of Monopoly when I finish at 8 o'clock tonight and you'll be finished at midnight. Wow. You've entertained. Think about it. We've entertained ourselves, you know, who don't like the game gestures. You know, we enjoy laughter and, and acting just silly and, and laughing. It does the heart good. Laughter, guys. I mean, it's like medicine. It does do our heart good. Who doesn't need a laugh? Maybe you are that type of person that just enjoys reading. 
Entertain yourself by grabbing a good book, getting under your blanket, getting by that light, and just reading. Praise God for that. You're feeding your mind. You're growing intellectually. You're growing spiritually. You're educating yourself. I mean, think about it. Entertainment's so important. Music, just, you know, watching YouTube videos of artists from the past, you know, in their concerts. We enjoy ourselves, guys. What I'm showing you is a list of things that I compiled here and I looked at it and I said, you know what, in each of these areas, we can enjoy it as being Christians and not feel like, hey, I don't need to be here. Think about the weddings and birthdays. Think about shopping again. I know some of us can't wait to go back shopping, right? Just going in there. Well, I tell you what, man, it feels good to have saved some money and not having to shop, you know, and go places and do things. Praise God, right? But I do miss window shopping. I do miss seeing things and going, wow, that's nice, right? Guys, let's enjoy our life. As Christians, you can be saved and have a blessed life enjoying it at the same time. And I'm here to show you that. We're Christians. We love God with all our heart, but we also enjoy our life. I'm a Cubs fan. Many people know that. Go Cubs, go. Yeah, my heart is broken, man. I can't watch my Cubbies. But that's okay. I can always go back to the World Series year. We did it, guys. Think about it. Fun. It's fun to talk about. It's fun to joke about, right? I mean, many of us are enjoying you know, certain things that we have missed. You know, we're enjoying watching reruns of old things like sporting events. It's bringing back memories of enjoyment. Think about all the times, guys. This is important. I'm showing you that entertainment, guys, is a critical part of our life. Don't lose sight of God in all of it. Enjoy the world of entertainment while serving God at the same time. I mean, think about the hundreds of thousands of people that had to cancel their vacations which was entertainment you know look at Disney for instance one of the greatest entertainment facilities of all times the millions of people that traffic that throughout the year now none that's entertainment who don't enjoy taking their kids to see Mickey and Minnie I mean think about the enjoyment that you've had well again we can enjoy those times but I believe God now in this moment is bringing back the right perspective in life family now here's the deal, God first, then your family. Then after that family comes the other things that make up our life. It could be ministry or it could be, you know, career, you know, things that we do, guys. We wanna make sure that we enjoy life, all right? I'm here to share with you today that life can be good in Christ, even on this entertainment mountain. Let's spend it together, okay? Let's enjoy this. And so I really love you guys. I appreciate just being able to spend this time with you. Uh, talking about these things and praying for it uh, just to show you what we've covered over the last couple weeks This is good. I appreciate you guys hanging with me. We started with the education mountain, didn't we? Praise God and guess what we're doing on Sunday our virtual graduation Successful graduates that made it a lot of it a lot of us prayer had gone forth that our kids wouldn't come become complacent We made it so praise God even now if there's someone you know that's graduated from high school or college if they hadn't emailed me Go ahead and email me I can add you to the list. We want to announce your name and cause you to walk across that virtual stage on Sunday after our, after our message. And so we prayed and we've asked God to be on the throne of that mountain and to raise up Christians and solidify that mountain of education. Of course, we are continually praying for that in our government as well. It's real important, guys, that our government is lifted in prayer. What specifically can we pray for our government right now? Well. It's not that just, oh, we need more money. We, we need, you know, this to be lifted or we need, you know, a, a vac vaccination. We need all that. I Don't get me wrong. But what we need first is the unity of God, the unity of the spirit. And so if you're going to pray for our government, pray for unity. Okay. We pray for our economy. You know, we all, you know, we're looking for money. You know, many people have lost jobs. The market's taking hits. But I trust me, my friends, the market will rebound. It will rebound. We have to have trust and confidence in God. And when we're praying for our economy, we want to pray now for the purity of our market. We want to pray for the integrity of trading. We want to pray that our, our world reflects in God we trust. Okay? That's our prayer for that mountain. And then, guys, we spent time. We pray for the family. We're always going to continue to pray, but I'm showing you this for your continual prayer efforts. Family. What's more important besides God than family? Pray for strong families. Pray for strong marriages. Pray for children that are going to be raised up to love God and be followers of God. Pray. 
We need prayer for our families. Amen. Uh, we spent a, mount, a great amount of time on the media mountain. You know, I thank God that we're able to adjust and still have church and bring to you the gospel of Jesus Christ through the media mountain. And so this is important that we continue to pray for this mountain. Pray for those companies that are hosting all billions of people every day. And it's just not, you know, during the morning or afternoon, all hours of the day, the media land is being bombarded with information. And we want the information to reflect Christ. We want the information to be pure. Do you Can you imagine how much information is flowing through these platforms? In one moment, you can make or break or change someone's life to the better or worse. We need to pray for God's reign and rule on this mountain, okay? Media. We take some time to pray for the mountain called religion, which reflects the church. And we need unity. I will say this, we cannot be divided by opinions, guys. There should be no differences of opinion. Jesus Christ is Lord. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you are Greek, whether you are Hebrew, whatever you are, we're the same. We bleed the same blood. Jesus died for us all at the cross. And so our prayer is that the church can continue to be the center where the gospel is preached, souls are saved, transformed, renewed, and people are brought into the kingdom, and God's kingdom continues to increase. Pray for our pastors, guys. You know, I've said, I've seen it over the uh, internet many, many times. Pastors have never uh, pastored a congregation during a pandemic before. Many pastors have never had to preach, you know, on social media before. Many pastors struggle getting things together. Many pastors and churches maybe are struggling to pay their bills or, you know, I've heard it all and all the like. And we want to pray that God keeps us strong. You know, I thank God for Faith Walk Harvest Center. I love you guys. You have been the absolute most supportive church in the world. And yes, I am biased because that's what you are. And to other men of God, I support what you do. And let that light shine, Faith Walk. Your light is shining in ways that you don't even imagine. So let's pray for our churches, guys. Preach the gospel. And then this week we prayed about health care. Oh, you watch the news. I'm sure you see. We can't avoid it, guys. How this health care industry has been bombarded. The resources, the manpower, the help that we need. We need health care in our industry to be strong. We need to come alongside these doctors and nurses, pharmacists. You know, next time you're going through Walgreens or CVS or Walmart, the pharmacist, tell that person thank you. And next time you see your doctor, next time you see a doctor or a nurse or someone on the street, tell them thank you. Tell them thank you. You know, a lot of them are going in harm's way daily. Some of them have contracted the virus and overcome it. Thank them. All right. Healthcare industry is really strong and important. So I encourage you guys to be in prayer for that. And of course, tonight we cover the entertainment mountain. And so we've covered a lot of ground. This has been roughly four weeks of covering ground of prayer. We're not going to stop. You know, Next week, we're going to shift into a greater realm of prayer beyond this. I'm going to really do some strategy, some strategic things. Um, how do we focus as a church in this hour moving forward? Remember, we're not going back. We're going forward. Many people say, well, I can't wait to go back to work or back to church. No, I can't wait to go forward to church. I can't wait to go forward in Christ. Forward. Everything we're speaking is momentum pushing forward. And so we're going to pursue that. All right. And uh, we're going to be back with you guys on Sunday. But I just want to make this final announcement to you guys tonight before I forget. Once I end this call, there will be a host waiting to pray with you and for you. The number 701-802-5269. Call that number. The access code is at the bottom of your screen there, 3710737. So at about 7 p.m. or so, um, they're going to be there. If you have a prayer request, if you want to be a part of prayer, you know, that person is waiting to pray with you for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our time where we are offering you the opportunity for someone to pray with you. And I know someone watching me right now needs prayer. Or I know at least you know somebody that needs prayer. You need to tell them, hey, you need to call this number and get prayer. You need someone to come into agreement with you. We need help, guys. We can't all do it alone. So I want to encourage you guys.
call that number, 701-802-5269. Access code again is 371-0737. Uh, you won't be disappointed. So call that number once we finish up. I'm going to be coming back to you guys on Sunday. I can't wait. I really enjoyed um, our Sundays time. I've enjoyed every day with you guys. I enjoy our Sundays. I got to admit, when we first started, I was a little bit like, oh boy, how's this going to work out? God, woof. Thank God for you and your support. Uh, the word is rich. God has been really building on his word. We thank God. And I'm also excited about Sunday. I make this final announcement because this will be the last time I announce it before we do it. Sunday is our virtual graduation. So after I finish speaking, guys, after we finish our communion time together, we're going to do a virtual graduation. And I want to acknowledge at that time all high school graduates and all college graduates. And all you got to do is send me your name the high school you're graduating from, the city it's in, the state it's in, or college you're graduating from, with what degree, uh, just let me know. My email, pastor at faithwalkharvestctr.org. So email me today so we can definitely add you to the list. So I'm going to sign off. Love you guys much. Appreciate all the favor, love, all the goodwill, and all the prayers that you have sown our way back at you. Remember, pray for the mountains. So now, as we depart from this place, let us not depart from your presence, but let us leave God confessing that we're blessed, we're prosperous, we're healthy, and we're wealthy. And all the blessing of Deuteronomy 28 are mine. In Jesus' name, amen. See you guys Sunday at 11 a.m.